Hey! And welcome to another episode of The Worst Need for Speed Ever, where we take a look at people's choices of the worst Need for Speed game ever. As always, before you guys comment your contender, let me remind you that for now, we are only looking at the console games. The handheld and mobile ports will be done in the future. I have to be mentally prepared to whatever that's gonna be. My sanity was gone just by looking at some of the suggestions you guys gave me on the last one. Don't worry though, we will get to them. This week we're gonna be talking about Need for Speed The Run. And again, before you go rushing down to the comments saying Oh my god this was so good, what are you talking about? Please understand that I'm talking about the Nintendo Wii port specifically. This doesn't reflect my views on the PC version or the Xbox version or the Playstation version. Not even the Java version. M maybe the 3DS but that's because they look pretty similar. But anyway, the Wii version of The Run was developed by Firebrand Games who you may or may not know for games like Need for Speed Undercover for the Nintendo DS, Need for Speed Nitro X for the Nintendo DSi, and Conjurer Andy's Repeatable Dungeon, which was released in 2020 and to this day only has one review on Steam. Exciting. The story begins with our character being pushed into the ocean inside his car, and meeting a woman who says they have to go to the start of the race. I don't know much about the main version of the run, but I'm pretty sure that's not how the story goes in that version. So already this is a different story than that one. The whole story here is told in these comic book style cutscenes, which for some reason makes me think that it has something to do with the Wii not being powerful enough to have quick time events in cutscenes like they had in the other version. You then start playing and the first thing you notice is probably the graphics, which in my opinion doesn't look good but also not that bad. The cars don't have any type of reflections besides the light that moves left and right when you turn, and there aren't a lot of details in the levels which honestly is kind of expected considering you're mostly in long highways with nothing but trees and mountains, with some exceptions, but it's hard to give this game a pass considering there's games that came before it and looked way better. Hell, even games from the Need for Speed franchise look better, just look at Carbon on the Wii. I think it's pretty obvious that just like in Undercover, this was supposed to be a budget game trying to get some money from people that didn't have a 360 or a PS3. In the middle of the racing you get into a battle with another racer and they keep this going for about 3 races going back and forth and using it as a way to change cars during gameplay. You throw this mysterious racer out of the track and when you get to him, he's gone. Uh, they never explain that, they, he's just gone for now. But of course, the thing we loved the most about Need for Speed was the gameplay. Uh, this sucks. You can tell that they were still going for the really casual players with this one. Kids, specifically. You know when you were a kid and you were playing with your Hot Wheels and you imagined some stupid things like you were so good at driving that you could do flips with your car? This is what this game feels like. In the middle of gameplay, just randomly, you get thrown into a quick time event where the game will ask you to do things like press up 5 times to build boost and you won't get it at first because you weren't expecting it. Not only that, but like in the level where you find the mysterious rival, you're trying to escape from him and the way you do that is by doing a Mortal Kombat special called Heroic Turn. Well, I guess he didn't know how to do a Heroic Turn. I'm impressed that no one stood up and said how much this idea sucked. There's heroic turns, heroic stunts, heroic dodges, like how does this add to the gameplay? If anything, it just takes you out of what in my opinion wasn't that bad of a gameplay. And yes, that's exactly what I said. I didn't hate this one as much as some of you guys in the comments did. I was actually having a little bit of fun playing this one and seeing the cheesy storyline. The cars control fine for what it is. The drifting just like in the last one is still bad but not as bad and because you're usually on long highways, there's not that many turns to make. Actually now that I think about it and hear me out for a second. 
This feels more like something like Outrun than Need for Speed. You're not exactly racing. You can easily get past every single car in this game like it was nothing. So what you're really doing is just going through the map trying to avoid hazards and other cars. You do have some other types of races that they shoved in there, like speed traps, having to destroy some cars, and time trials, which again, serve no purpose other than acting like there's some type of diversity in this game, when really you're just doing the same thing. You even have lives in this game, 3 of them per race, so if your car breaks 3 times you have to start the race again, which isn't really a problem because the only time I failed in this game was when I didn't understand what I had to do and was just racing instead of doing the objective. One thing that annoyed me a little, besides of course the unnecessary addition of quick time events, is that you have a super linear story mode here. I'm pretty sure that you could at least pick between a few cars in the main version of the run, but here you can't even do that. Your character changes car and you have to go with it until something happens that lets you change into another car. And the weirdest part is that it's not like they didn't have the license to other cars. They definitely did because you can use them in split screen and in the challenge mode. They just chose not to let you pick the cars in the story mode. After your first plot twist that the mysterious driver was actually your girlfriend's brother after revenge because she passed after selling your car one night and running into a wall, yes, that's actually what happens. You save him after throwing him off track again, because the girl you still know nothing about told you to. You two become best friends and the mafia starts going after you. And after a good night of sleep, you find out that the girl stole your car and now you go after her with your new best friend. I will say this though, I kind of like the soundtrack on this one, and it's pretty interesting, really. Did you know that Mick Gordon, the guy who made the soundtrack for Doom and Killer Instinct, made a remix of two Need for Speed Hot Pursuit tracks for this version of the game? Yeah, me neither, but it's pretty awesome. Again, I would have to play the other version of this game to see how it compares, but there's a lot of pretty good songs that I never heard before, like Better Days by The Wolfman and Nashtad by Jeff... Jeff Dick. Interestingly enough for the car freaks that are watching, you may or may not be pleased to know that they still use the same car sounds from Most Wanted. Tell me if the sound for this Porsche isn't the exact same as the Carrera GT from Most Wanted. And I know someone knows the answer for this, but I am 99% sure that this is from Underground 2. After you finally meet with random girl again, she reveals that she's an informant and that she used you to get some files to another person and the best way to do that is by using the run as cover? Isn't the run like illegal races? So obviously the police will be after us? Uh, uh, honestly I don't even know why I tried to make sense of these. You two get in love and the police and the mafia are after you. So you outrun them with heroic dodges and heroic turns and you throw away the files so the police and the mafia start fighting each other over it while you two run away to Canada. Uh, no, I'm not joking. Like I said before, you do have a challenge mode that you can play. It's kind of like the challenge series we had in older Need for Speed games, but just not as fun. You can pick one of a few pre-selected cars and have to do either some time trials or speed traps and whatever. And they even tried putting some customization in it, but it's very basic and it seems like it's something that they just threw there after finishing the game because they had some extra time. It's overall a pretty basic game, made as a cash grab for the few looking for Need for Speed game on the Wii. I would recommend it over Need for Speed Nitro because it would be the last painful experience because this one you would probably just find boring at best. 
but you can have a fun experience if you keep in mind how stupid this one can get. Uh, you know what, actually don't get any of these, it, it's for the best. But yeah, I guess that's it for this one. I already have some other Need for Speed games in mind for this series, but if you have any ideas for some terrible Need for Speed games that are on console, let me know in the comments. I'm also planning on making videos on the best Need for Speed games, which shouldn't take too long, so I hope to see you there. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. And if you did, make sure you leave a like. It really helps me a lot. Oh, and as always, a huge thank you for our new members. Mars Cruz, Binho, the man with the golden gooch, and Sky. Like I always say, being a member truly helps me a lot. So thank you so much. And that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.